Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Morgan, and bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. Last time we left off, we just became an apprentice. Uh, joined Bosper as a hunter, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, there's no apprenticeship opportunities for pipe fitters or tin knockers in this town, so this is what we had to make do with. He said he had no lodging available for us, but we can easily kick him out of his own bed. Mm. Thank you, sir. Sure, he won't mind. Now... Last episode, I said we were going to go finish up, uh... Well, not really finish up, but, uh, just deal with the bandits out in the woods. Nobody really mentioned them, but there are a few out there. Um, these ones are of no real significance. They're just, they're worth going after for the XP, for the loot. Um, so I figured we'd take care of that. There are actually, uh, there's more than one event that happens out in these woods. Uh, each chapter brings something else here. Um, but for some reason specifically, there's a quest that happens for mercenaries, um, in chapter 3, that involves coming out here. I don't know why it only occurs for mercenaries, because it has nothing to do with them specifically, but it, it is what it is. The only other thing out here that we've seen were the black goblins camping out in that direction. I don't know if we're going to deal with those today. Actually, how many of them are there? I got two Fuego Balls. But I'm gonna need these. Don't remember if one is enough to kill... a Black Goblin. How many are there in total? There are four. Which means I would have to take two in melee unless I fell back. We might come after them another time. First things first, around this boulder, there's some loot hiding here. We got some arrows, sh another short bow, and uh, another fireball spell. Uh, if you don't already have some, that fireball spell will come into good use here, I imagine. Or at, at least it usually does for me. So, in total, I believe there are four bandits in here, and our goal is to try and lure them away one at a time. If we fail to do so, thanks to the fact that this is a long run down here, we actually have a very clear shot to get away from them, if need be. Now, we got another stone tablet here, one of the magical ones. I haven't uh, introduced this stone tablet to Vatras yet. He actually is looking for these. I don't think we told him about it anyway. Um, but he gives you a reward based on how many you bring him at once, which is kind of annoying. So if you just bring him one or two at a time, he'll just give you some potions. If you give him a whole stack of once, he gives you an amount of mana equivalent to how many you gave him, which is why I want to hang on to him. Anyway, so right off the bat, there's one bandit hiding in here. If we creep up, he's going to come at us. And I want to fall back, because sometimes he'll get the attention of another one. And if they can't really maneuver their way out of the cave, it makes it a little bit easier to take this guy on solo. So we haven't fought too many NPCs in this game, but this these bandits, and almost everybody who encounter this early, have the habit of the really bad charging AI. And this guy is especially exploitable for some reason with the sidestep trick. And he's going nuts with that shit. Something about frame rate seems to affect how quickly NPCs can pivot and turn and face you. So I usually don't have it that easy. I think it has something to do with the fact that while recording, the game's capped at... Well, I mean, it's always at 60 FPS, so I don't know what I'm talking about. So that's as fast as my monitor refreshes. Anyway, uh, one thing you'll know, uh, notice as I play, I'm a compulsive saver. Pretty much everything I kill at this point in the game, I save afterwards because I'm worried about um, losing progress. So we got one, two, three in here. That guy seems to already be kind of aware of us. I'm must gonna rip you must already pieces. hear us. So we got to kind of dash out of here and hope that not all of them can get out because sometimes they get stuck on the environment. Now, unfortunately, I got two of them here. I find the strafe for some reason seems a little bit faster than the forward run because these guys are not catching up at all. But if you just keep running, what you'll get 
Hmm. He's got to chase me further than usual. Much further than usual. Much further than yes! usual. There they Run go. As fast as you can. Normally they don't go that far. By the way, when you're running, you can pre you can press and hold R, or at least that's the default button, and that lets you turn around. Uh, not turn around, but look behind you. Okay, so I didn't quite kill him, but it'll be enough. Oh, hang on, he didn't charge. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. Shit. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, my God. You got me good there. So, I picked up a lot of lockpicks from these guys, which is nice, because we just learned how to perform that act in the last episode. Now, there is something I'm going to show later in the episode to get quite a few hit points. Um... Essentially, you double our, what we got right now. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't really feel like I need to, and we need a lot of money to do it, which we're gathering here. Um, but if you have a thousand gold to burn right now and you want to have the extra hit points for when you take care of this, uh, normally I would do that. And actually, there is a trick I used to use and I was going to use. I even hinted at it in the first episode. Um, getting uh, Trading hit points to the Beliar Shrine for gold, since you get 500 gold for giving 15 hit points. And we get a lot more than that by donating that gold um, to Darren later on, the Priest of Inos. I'm gonna rip Which is what I used pieces. to do, but I think all told we will be able to get a thousand gold without having to sacrifice anything, and it'll be worth it in the end. This guy, like I said, doesn't always figure out how to get around this corner here. Which is why we were able to separate him from the others. Owie. Yeah, you did. I don't know why it took me so long to start using that strafe trick. It wasn't until quite recently that I realized how effective it was to essentially cancel the recovery of that second hit. Start spinning around. Anyway, this is our first chance to pick locks, or at least the first one I've taken. And the trick here is that as... Uh, Thorbin said, you need to turn the lockpick left and right. You'll notice when we interact with it, the hero just sits there and stares at it. It actually took me ages to figure out what you were supposed to do here. But the movement keys, uh, indicate a left and right turn. So left, we broke the lockpick because that was the wrong direction. So the combo actually starts from the right, left, left, right. So that's what that combination happened to be. Um, your chance to break a lockpick is lessened by having higher dexterity. That's actually what Thorbin meant by uh, your skill increasing, because there's only one skill in lockpicking in this game. Uh, once you know it, you know it, because it's the same old minigame. Dexterity just influences how likely you are to break a lockpick. And I used to insist for the longest time that how quickly you press the buttons also affected that. So if you waited between one click to the next click, you're less likely to break it. I don't know if that's true, and I cannot prove it, but I really felt that way for the longest time. And every time you fail, you turn the wrong direction. Whether you break a lockpick or not, you have to start over again. So it helps to... That's kind of one of the reasons why I speak the combination out loud as I do it. But I also do that because... If people can't be bothered to keep reloading and breaking lockpicks, 
and just want to know what the combination is. Well, this video will at least give you that. Can't say I didn't give you nothing. Anyway, we got that. We're going to head back to town, start pawning off a bunch of stuff, and see if that gets us to our 1,000 gold requirement for Darren. We've already given him 10, but he gave us 20 back. So, I think it's time to pay the piper. Wouldn't be so sure. We found a sack of sheepskins in the Would bandit cave, which is nice. Bosper will actually take there those. You are again. Uh, if you are an apprentice of his. I've got a few skins for you. A sheepskin? You didn't go slaughter some farmer's sheep in the pasture, did you? I wouldn't dream of doing that. Good work. Come see me again when you have more. I don't know why you would ever skin a sheep. I mean, all Show you really want wears. is their wool. And... Well, you get more of that if you leave them alive. Alright, we're gonna sell these swords, these axes, that thing, those things. Bunch of crossbow bolts. Silver ring. Broomstick. Hammers. Ooh, might hang on to those. We'll have some fun with that later. And then we got a sack of gold here. So, we got a thousand gold to give Darren and fifty gold to, uh... You listen to the wrong people. To drink away as we see fit. Where did you pick that up, then? And if you are interested, these swamp weed... Uh, you can find raw swamp weed plants out in the wild. Uh, these are processed stalks, so you can actually make these yourself in the game if you want. But, uh, these are just for if you need a little, uh, mental relaxation. Into Whoa. So yeah, that's all these do. They slow things down. The thing is they slow you down along with the rest of the world. That helps you in any way. You'd be the first, probably. Because this just annoys the hell out of me. Saw that order and chaos were now unequal, and but we just needed a little break. To take his divine power from the human. Now, I actually have notes to follow today. The last few episodes I didn't, and which is why they kind of ran overboard and ran off the rails a little bit. But I'm not actually sure all these notes will get me to uh, 45 minutes per se. So, um, let's actually talk with Hakon so I can at least prove a point that I made in the last episode. I am Hakon, the weapons That's dealer. Terrible. Every man should carry a weapon these days. Especially when venturing outside of the city walls. But that's terrible. Tell me more about the area around the city. It's gotten too Someone's dangerous out there. Work. Because of the bandits, for one thing. And also on account of wild beasts. Even the animals don't seem to get enough to eat in these crappy times. They're venturing closer to the city all the time. Do you know anything about the paladins? Terrible. Yes. Those guys are ruining my business. All you can buy in this entire town is a short sword if at I most. They've like helped themselves to anything that's longer than a foot and a half. That's terrible. In return, I now get to live in the hotel free of charge. <laughs> Again, another man speaking so blasphemously about such royal soldiers. These men are here to protect you. Be grateful. Where do you get your weapons from? Harad the Smith has been my supplier up to now. Oh, now crazy. all he does is make stuff for the Paladins. He works it's for those guys worse. day and night like a madman. Without pay. That's not he right. thinks it's his duty. All I can offer you now is my remaining stock. Well, you uh, really sell your goods hard. What do you know about the disappearances of the citizens of Corinus? I have seen many pass through the eastern city gate. Some of those who came, I had never seen before in my life. And many of those who went out never came back. But what happened the other day was really quite strange. There was this fellow who came here. I think his name is Joe. He bragged that he would soon come into some serious money. He claimed that he knew how to get into one of the city towers where the militia keep their arms. I haven't seen him since. Even though I used to bump into him around the same time every day. I reported this to the militia. I thought that maybe he had been caught and thrown into the dungeon. That's not but how you Lord spell that. Andre had no idea what I was talking about. He didn't even know the fella. Someone's gotta do the work. Huh, interesting story. What do you know about the bandits? What do I know about them? 
They robbed me on my way to the city. And I'm not the only one. They've been up to their tricks for quite a while. The militia tried to track them down, but without any success. Do you know who in the militia took part in the search? The fellow's name is Pablo. He and a few others went looking for the bandits. But they didn't find them. Do you know where I can find Pablo? He patrols around the city. You'll find him either at the Temple Square or in the lower part of town. Where did they hold you up? Near Akil's farm. Just go out of the city gate from here. Follow the road to the right. After a while, you'll get to a few steps. The bastards came from there. I bet they have their hideout back there in the woods. You think? I'll deal with it. What? You want to take on the bandits? By yourself? You're quite a good fighter, huh? How much is the matter worth to you? That's a dangerous business. Well, it's all right with me. That's not what I heard. I'll pay you 100 gold pieces if you defeat the bandits. So 100 gold isn't a huge amount, but again, he would not pay you at all if you did this for Herod. I think I proved that in the live stream because I went with that, and he doesn't have a change of conscience and pay you out anyway. Show me your. If you already got the quest from Herod, he will not pay you. So here's his selection of weapons. In spite of what he said, he actually has some very good ones. Uh, it's possible in Gothic 2 Classic he didn't have such a, such a strong stock. But um, there is an annoying bug with merchants in this game where if they sell weapons that are better than what they have equipped, they will equip the best that they can equip. I just said equip a lot. So if you, for example, really want this axe, you're obviously not going to wield it anytime soon, but if you don't buy it from him now, he will equip this, which is very annoying. There's uh, an amulet for weapon protection, which uh, we're not going to bother buying. Because we need this gold to pay out old Darren. And for the record, the, that glitch with the, um, with the weapons only occurs the first time you open up their merchant inventory. Because suddenly their merchant inventory essentially like generates itself. That's and they can actually so equip items good. from it, which is really weird. So, might as well wrap up everything else this guy has to say. I need to talk to the paladins. Can you help me get to them? Well, you need access to the upper end of town. However, this is allowed only to citizens and the city guard. And of course, to us. Magicians of fire. How can I become a fire magician? You must join our order as a novice. When you have served for a time, perhaps you will be accepted say. into the ranks of the magicians. However, the path to acceptance is long and full of work and, and study. It's going to get even worse. Oh, that sounds boring. That's Tell me about Inos. Inos, our almighty lord, is he the light the and the fire. He chooses the humans lord. to be his tool, Honestly, giving them himself. magic and laws. We act in his oh, name. We that. administer justice according to his will and preach his word. So it's funny to me how the sleeper camp, um, Iberian, sounded like that kind of Baptist minister. And now right. Darren's taken the role in the name of uh, a more traditional god. Tell me more about the monastery. We instruct our That's students in all been. forms of magic. But the arts of the magicians of fire secret. consist of more than these alone. We are also well-versed in the art of alchemy and in the creation of powerful runes. <laughs> we also make excellent wine. I thought wine was supposed to be ceremonial, not for uh, indulgence. I want to make a donation. Oh, well, let's be real. All right, so here's the thing. If you want to make a donation, you might think the bigger donations get you the biggest rewards. But the thing with Darren is he only takes a collective total of 1,000 gold from you. And each time you donate, you essentially get from you essentially get from the so, the same draw from the same pool of rewards. So 200 gold or 50 gold, you're going to get the same thing. The only difference is if you donate in 200 increments, you only get to give it to him five times. So you get one quarter of the rewards that you get, giving him in increments of 50. Really stupid. Don't know why they did it this way. Annoys the hell out of me. That also means we have to donate 20 times. Yeah, 20 times to get everything. So, you're just going to have to sit here and uh, bear with it. I, don't believe that. I bless you in the name of Enos, for he is light and righteousness. 
first reward, we get completely healed, which is absolutely useless because we can get the same thing from a bed. But that's terrible. I bless you in the name of Enos, for he is light and righteousness. Second reward, we get two mana points, which I also don't want now because uh, two mana points doesn't really help us at this point. And I prefer to uh, get the uh, bonuses like that after we've exhausted uh, learning points into mana because of the way the cost escalates later on, which we'll get into. But I'm only taking it now because we need the hit points and those only come after everything else. I bless you in the name of Enos. So 50 XP for 50 gold. Now all that's left are hit points in increments of five. I bless you in the name of If I And he works all day too. Oh another learning point. I want to Hang on, that that's not right. I bless you in the name of Oh no, that's right. Enos. I forgot about that one random make... learning point in the middle of it. I w you have donated more than a thousand gold pieces overall to me. The blessing of the Lord in us is always with you. I'm surprised you don't just let me pay until I'm blue in the face. So, 1,000 gold gets us one learning point. Not helpful. Two mana. Not very helpful. Completely healed. Not very helpful. And a collective total of 85 hit points. And we had 88 to begin with, so we've effectively doubled our hit point pool. And that's going to be very helpful from this point on. Now, we've spoken with Zerus before because we, uh, what, what do we do? Forget what we got out of him. Do we need to scroll for some reason? I don't remember. Do you brew your own potions? No, I either get them from the monastery or I buy them from Constantino, the alchemist. If you're interested in brewing potions, then talk to him. He needs an assistant. But he's too pig-headed to hire someone himself. He's just as stubborn as a mule. He always passes me when he goes out on the East Gate to collect plants for his potions. Where exactly does Constantino gather his herbs? He always goes through the Eastern City Gate here and then disappears into the wilderness to the left. He once told me that just about everything grows there, except for King Sorrel. Has Constantino ever told you where to find King Sorrel? I once heard him say that the stuff grows near stone circles, near Lobart's farm. That's a farm near the other gate. There's one of those stone circles. I think it's on a hill. It used to be a grave or something. Interesting. So, when you talk to him about that, it actually generates three uh, rare plants in the world. One dragon root, one goblin berry, one king sorrel that you would never be able to find otherwise. Now, I didn't really know about this for the longest time. I knew about the king sorrel that generated up there uh, by Lobart's farm, as he said, which was not there when we looked before. I did not know about the dragon root and the... Uh, what you call it? Uh, goblin berry that happened out here. These blood flies are just gonna get in the way. Now, these are adult blood flies. They're quite a bit tougher than the ones we dealt with near Lobart's farm. Uh, they're not quite as easy to smack down, and they are actually much more resistant to arrows than the ones before. Because the juvenile ones, turns out, have no resistance to, um, arrows whatsoever. These ones do. So it's a massive increase in protected, protection that they have. Anyway, the first dragon root shows up here, under these ferns, right outside the gate. Never knew about it. I don't know how I didn't know about it. Probably because I usually collect all this stuff out here before even talking to Zerus. And then never talk to him. The second one is a goblin berry that shows up right here in, on this hill. And the last one is the King Sorrel that shows up on the cliff near that stone circle by Lobart's farm. Why don't we go uh, pick that up just to demonstrate. So right down the hill here, right on this nice cliff face here, is a King Sorrel. 
Again, not something we're really going to be able to use anytime soon. But it's good to have. We also found the goblin berry up there earlier uh, in the first episode, which I insisted was another thing that seemed to only generate randomly. Because I couldn't always find it, and I'm not really sure why that is. Now, if you are interested, um, there's a mod for this game called the Lahiver mod, which I butcher the pronunciation horribly, I'm sure. Um, one of the things it does is it actually cuts away this part of the wall, and this leads straight down to the valley that, oh my goodness, that we found Lester in. So it's an immediate shortcut up to here. And I'm not sure, I mean, this seems like, this seems so artificial, it would not surprise me if Pronobites put this in as an afterthought, realizing they didn't want you to bypass the farm, um, the bandits and all that stuff, uh, straight out the gate. Or that's just the way the landscape kind of came together. There's also another uh, thing, which I, I honestly kind of men meant to mention in the first episode. There is a what appears to be a cave-in behind um, Zardas's tower, and that presumably led to a cave uh, on the other side, which is close-ish to the entrance to the Valley of Mines. So that could explain why... Um, a bunch of convicts were coming this way, and it could possibly explain uh, uh, what someone said, which I unfortunately forgot who said it, so I'll uh, link your name. I'll give him a shout out here. But it could explain how Cavalorn ended up over there, since he got clobbered by the bandits and it presumably stuck around for a while. Um, it is possible that Zardas's tower didn't show up until after Cavalorn had taken that path and the cave collapsed. So that might explain how Cavalorn made it all the way over there, so good shout out on that. Hey, you! Now Hilda will still give us soup. Can you give me something to eat? Here. I think it's... I'm not sure when she stops giving you stuff. And I also am not sure when Lobart stops being angry at us for stealing his clothes. I know that once we join the militia, that both of those things stop. Hilda says you can get food in town, and Lobart can't be angry at you because you have a quest to do with him. Um, at this point, Lester will have taken our suggestion to go talk to Zardas, but we're not going to go see him right away because I want to wait until Cavalorn moves on, and then we can walk past him because that bandit, that friendly bandit that we tipped off, is uh, going to spawn at Cavalorn's camp now. And Cavalorn will kill him as soon as he lays eyes on him. So I want to keep him alive, because he's a good guy. Will actually help us yet again, even later on. But that's not going to come until Chapter and 3, so, so look forward Eidos to that. To leave a part of his power in his realm so, that he might so, we're about to get involved in some uh, dirty business. Something that I can't dodge forever, and I want to take care of it now. And... I have made, I have come up with numerous methods to try and deal with this. The easiest, show me, or at least quickest way I found involves a sleep spell and an ice block spell. Unfortunately, both of those cost quite a bit more money than we have. So let us figure out how we can make some quick cash. Might need to do another quest in the meantime. That's not what I heard. I don't believe that. I can't take care of everything for everybody. Actually, no. We can. Uh, we should be able to get some money through a couple other methods in the meantime. Anyway, I told you to dodge this gentleman on the bench here. Uh, you might recognize him as Canthar, who we met outside of town, who seemed to have an inkling on how he could blackmail us, and he's about to make good on that. Hey, you. I have a proposition for you. What do you want? I want my old stall in the marketplace back. Sarah snatched it away from me, but she has had that spot long enough. I want her to give up the stall. And what's my part in this? I will give you a letter to stick in her pocket. Then you go to Andre and tell him that Sarah is selling weapons to Onar. She lands in prison. You pocket the bounty, and I get the stall. You have two days to accomplish this. What's in it for me? When I have the stall, you will get a weapon from me, and a damned good one. Damned good? 
What will happen if I refuse to do that? That would be truly stupid of you. Because you see, I know that you're an escaped convict. If that gets around, it could do considerable harm to your situation in the city. Oh, dirty. So if you refuse to do this, uh, it just kills the quest. And Canthar basically threatens, saying that, uh, you know, you're going to regret this decision later. When that comes up is in Chapter 3. When you come back, uh, I'm not going to spoil what comes ahead, but you come back to the city, and basically everyone in town doesn't want to talk to you, or at least all the merchants refuse to do business with you, because he Canthar has spread the word that you are a convict, and so people know your face, and they don't want to deal with you. All right, looks like I've got no choice. You're a clever lad. Here is the letter. How am I supposed to force the letter on her? Let her show you her wares. And while she does, you hide the letter on her. And bear in mind, I am an influential man in the city. So don't try to play me for a fool. Oh. Don't you have a job to do? First, That's foist terrible. the letter onto Sarah, and then go to Andre and accuse her. Do that, and don't try to cheat me. You would regret it. Would I? So Sarah is here. I Obviously, uh... Man, I wish we saw weapons as badass in the game. Well, look at the size of them swords. Sarah is a weapons merchant, kind of like Hakon, but... Uh... Not Hakon. How's business? When the Paladins came, I first thought that it was a good business opportunity, but they let Herod make their weapons, and neither Hakon nor I make even one gold piece off them. Moreover, the farmers no longer supply us with food, and all the prices have gone up. It's only a small consolation that the Paladins are paying my hotel bill. <laughs> they both have the exact same disposition towards the Paladins, so... What's the problem with the farmers? They refuse to deliver their goods. Now that the ships no longer come in, the city depends entirely on the supplies provided by the farmers, of course. An owner, the largest farmer, has hired mercenaries to protect his farm from the city guards. Otherwise, they'd simply snatch the goods for themselves. But the mercenaries don't just guard Onar's farm. They come as far as the small farms outside of town to intimidate the farmers. I saw them as I was passing Akil's farm. I wouldn't like to be in his shoes now. Ooh, that sounds unfortunate. Where will I find Akil's farm? If you go out of the east gate here and follow the road to the right, you'll come to a stairway. It leads up to Akil's farm, but I wouldn't go there now. The mercenaries are certainly still there. And they will certainly still be there when we eventually show up like two weeks from now. Show me your wares. They really don't have a whole lot to do. So she's got a lot of decent weapons. Actually, way more than Hakon does, which is funny. So, the trick to foisting the letter on her, the false uh, order from the uh, landowner, is literally just sell her the letter. And it has no value, so it's not like you get gold from it. But uh, just get, putting it in her merchant inventory is all you have to do, because there's no reverse pickpocketing mechanic in this game. So if we leave this here and go talk to Lord Andre, uh, we can turn her in and frame her. We're not going to do that. We're better people than that. In spite of uh, Canthar's threats, we're going to turn this around on him. Well, before we do that, why don't we have a look at this square? So, there's things that come and go in this square here. We got good old Harold here, who never shuts up. He never has anything to say. He just stands there at the gallows all day, just shouting. Uh, shouting the news. Uh, every major development in the game actually gets a different line from him. So it can be pretty interesting if you want to just stand here and listen to uh, his news all day. This guy, who has no name, just stands here. Hey, come closer. Take a break and have a sip of cool beer. Lord Andre is springing for a few barrels of free beer. How kind of him. Hey, come closer. Nothing hits the spot like a... Hey, come closer. So if you just keep talking to him, you can... Hey, no... Hey, no... It's a little hit and hey, miss, the... but you can keep getting hey, free the... beers off of him, hey, like... The... Ad hey, infinium. The... Hey, no... Hey, the... Not, not, the, not, so hey, if the, you're a thirsty guy, that's how you can get some free beers. And uh, here's Bartok blowing off some steam after our little jaunt out in the woods. Okay. Yes, but I'm not going out of the city anymore. At least not anytime soon. My knees are still shaking from the scare that orc gave us. So we can still learn sneaking and bowing from him, but I'm not going to do that hey, now. Not the, 
Why don't we get some more free beers? Because these will be a good way to line our pockets up for those scrolls that we need. Order of the Honorable Lord Hagen, the following decree is Why don't we actually listen in on this? Due to the general situation, the forest and wilderness near the city are to be avoided for your own protection. Furthermore, any contact with the rebelling peasantry in the surrounding areas is strictly forbidden. Okay, that's quite simple. So yeah, no deal, no dealing with them renegade farmers. Hey, you! What are you doing here? I'm a novice from the monastery. I run errands for the magicians and also the paladins. I have provided the three innkeepers in the city with wine from the monastery. Who are the three innkeepers? One of them is the good man here behind the bar. Then there is Karagon, who has his tavern on the Temple Square, and Cardiff, the owner of the tavern in the Harbor District. What can you tell me about the monastery? We novices seek enlightenment in prayer to Innos and learn the principles of faith from the magicians. We serve them as we serve Innos and prepare ourselves for the union with the fire. Prepare to link the flame? Well, take me to the monastery. Forget it. Do you know how many creatures I had to evade on the way? When I think of all those blood flies, wolves, and goblins, I'm glad that I don't have to leave here anymore. Besides, you can't enter the monastery anyway. But why not? Entrance is only permitted to magicians, paladins, and novices. Now what kind of novice can just leave to go to the city and never have to come back? What exactly is your duty at this point? How can I become a novice? If a man feels the deep desire... Hey, just tell me what the conditions are. You need the offerings, a sheep, and... A thousand gold pieces. Well, one of the things I learned, you'll notice that uh, his voice was a little bit different when he said a thousand gold pieces. Uh, I think my friend Val actually dug through the files and found that every single voice actor in this game has a line where he says a different increment of gold pieces. And they just kind of, whenever that voice actor had a line and they had to say an amount of gold, they would just pull from that library instead of have them actually come back to the studio and record it. So it's kind of hilarious, but that's also why there's so many uh, audio discrepancies in a uh, dialogue where those kind of things came up. How am I supposed to get that much gold? Since you obviously don't know anyone who would pay that for you, you'll simply have to go to work. Where can I find a sheep? From the farmers, of course. But you won't get one for nothing. So, ironically, all that money we paid Here to Darren inhabitants of uh, could have been our entrance fee to the monastery, the but now it won't Lord be. Hagen, but that's fine. I think we'll have other means. Hey, you! Due to the general situation, hey, what's up? the forest yeah, as long and wilderness as the near the don't city have any are to be avoided for your me. own protection. I can have myself a couple of beers here. <laughs> any contact with <laughs> the rebelling peasantry in the surrounding You're areas is strictly You're working for the paladins? Yeah, I, I report to them on the situation in the city. At the moment, everything is quiet. How are things with the orcs? No reason to worry. We in the city guard and the paladins have everything under control. Go home and let us do our work. We're watching over the town and its citizens. Oh. Mm, yes, I feel so safe under your protective, watchful eyes. Would you like another beer? <sighs> mm, there's nothing better than a cool ale. You were about to say something about the orcs. Oh yeah, yeah, right. The orcs are absolutely no threat to the city. They're stuck in the uh, Valley of Mines, and, and the pass is, is held by the paladins. <laughs> Not even a meat bug could get through there. <laughs> yeah, we're about to see how well held it is by the paladins. Now, if you give him another beer, he does have another line. Uh, the hero essentially brings up the orc that was spotted outside of town by Vino, and at this point that we have taken care of ourselves with Bartok. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that, because there's a character lady who asks for the information that you can get from him. I think I was told that there's a, an alternative line if we go there on our own. Uh, or if if we don't get that dialogue from him, there's an alternative line where we can essentially say that we killed that orc. 
And I've never heard that line, so I want to hold off and see that for ourselves. Anyway, we're in the barracks now. This is where the militia hang out. This is where we actually join the militia if you want to. And this is the man to speak to, Lord Andre. Notice he's dressed very differently than the militia. Because he's a bit be above you, their stranger. rank. What brings you to me? I've got an important message for Lord Hagen. Well, you stand before one of his men. What is this about? It's about a sacred artifact, the Eye of Innos. The Eye of Innos. I have never heard of it, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. If there truly is an artifact of this name, only the highest members of our order would know anything about it. In any case. That's why I have to talk to Lord Hagen himself. Lord Hagen receives only paladins or those who are in the service to paladins. It is beneath his dignity to waste his time with members of the common folk. No, oh, what makes him so high and mighty? Why are you paladins in town? The goals of our mission are secret. I can only tell you that there is no danger for the citizens of the town. You need not worry. That's reassuring. I want to take up service with the paladins. Good. I can well use every able man here, no matter what his reasons for joining us. If you place yourself see your in the standards service are of the high. paladins, I shall help you get an audience with Lord Hagen. However, I have my orders only to accept citizens of the town into the militia. My commander is afraid that spies or saboteurs could sneak in. He wants to limit the risk this way. Therefore, you must first be a citizen of the town. Whether this rule makes sense or not is disputable, but orders are orders. I mean, it only took us an hour to become a citizen, so I don't think uh, that's a very tall order, but... Um... Since we do ha have that qualification, we could join now, but we can also ask for another way to get in. Is there a faster way to join you? Hmm. You're really serious about this, aren't you? Good. Listen, I have a problem. If you solve it for me, I shall see to it that you are accepted into the militia. But the most important thing is, you must not breathe a word of it to anyone. What's your problem? Recently, there have been a number of thefts in the city. Thus far... We have not been able to capture anyone. The thieves are simply too skillful. The scum know their business. I'm sure that we're dealing with an organized gang. It would not amaze me if there were a thieves guild in Corinus. Find the leaders of the gang and hunt them down. Then I shall see to it that you are accepted into the militia, regardless of whether or not you are a citizen. But you must say nothing about our agreement. My lips are sealed. It's funny how they call it a thieves guild. It make it seem much more... Uh, poetic and romantic than it really is. It's just some sleazy people who steal shit. Where should I start looking for the thieves? If I knew that, I'd go there myself. I can only tell you this much. We recently turned the entire harbor district upside down and found nothing. Absolutely nothing. The people there are not very talkative, particularly if you wear the armor of a paladin. But you are an outsider. They will not distrust you so quickly. You could ask around the harbor first. But be careful. If the people there realize that you are working for the Paladins, you will learn nothing. Nothing. What should I do once I've found one of the thieves? If it's a matter of a lackey, a henchman, or some small fry, it would be best if you avoid a fight. You should rather come to me and report. I shall then see to it that the fellow winds up behind bars. The city guard could intervene in an open battle, and you would not have the opportunity of explaining to them what is going on. Furthermore, there is a bounty for every rotten apple you put behind bars. However, if you locate the leader's hideout, well, then you probably won't be able to avoid a fight. About the Thieves' Guild? Yes. I'm working on it. Good. Keep me informed. So we'll do the Thieves' Guild later, but it actually is funny that this is supposed to be a faster way to join the militia when it takes about ten times longer. Not necessarily, but it is certainly harder. What should I expect with the militia? Let me make one thing clear. To be a soldier of the militia means much more than strolling through the city in a uniform. It is a dirty and even bloody job. Once you are one of us, a great deal of work will be waiting for you. But it is worth it. Besides the pay, you might someday have the chance of becoming a holy warrior of Innos. Wow. About those missing people. Just leave me alone with that. I've got other problems. Huh, you definitely seem to have the security of the city in mind. I'm ready to join the militia. Then you are a citizen of Corinus? Bosper the Bowmaker has taken me on as his apprentice. Then you also know something about living in the wild. That is good, because the militia has assignments not just within the city walls, 
We can certainly use people who know their way around in the wilderness. And the bowmaker is an important man in the city. If he vouches for you, there's nothing standing in the way of your acceptance into the militia. You can join us if you wish, but your decision will be final. Once you wear the armor of the militia, you cannot simply take it off and no longer belong to us. Are you prepared to fight together with us for Inos and the King? If this is your decision, say you're ready. If you want to join anything else, do not. I'm not quite sure yet. As long as you still have doubts about your decision, I cannot accept you into the militia. And you never shall. But we I've have come to other business the with you. For a criminal. Canthar the merchant is trying to get rid of Sarah. Sarah? The weapons merchant in the marketplace? I was supposed to foist a letter on Sarah, which claimed that she's supplying weapons to Onar. I see. I shall gladly pay the bounty for that bastard. He is already as good as behind bars. And he means that very literally, because as soon as this dialogue happens, Canthar is behind bars in here. And there he is. <laughs> Just teleports. I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. We will discuss this later. Now get lost. I want to rest. Oh, I'm sure we will discuss this later. What do you want here? I want to see the prisoners. Go ahead, but I'll stay away too long. Understood? Yeah, if you say so. What can you tell me about this area? These are the barracks. Where do you want to go? Nah, I don't need any of this. How just walk there? So, for some reason, he gives you directions Thanks. everywhere else. I don't know why the jailer is your, uh, your source of directions. Seems strange. So, if we send Canthar to jail, he does not stay in jail. Just like I said, if you don't do his quest, he comes back in Chapter 3 to haunt you. Same thing if you put him in jail. Uh, even though he's uh, been arrested for trying to get rid of Sarah... Somehow in Chapter 3, he's able to negotiate his way out there, uh, out of there, and get rid of Sarah himself. She actually disappears for good. I have no idea what happens to her. She just uh, vanishes from the game. there you are again. Kanthar was trying to trick you and to get your booth for himself, but I've turned him over to the city guard. Then you've made an enemy of a dangerous man. I've known the bastard for a long time, and he's always wanted my place for himself. Take this weapon as a token of my gratitude. The ironic thing is I think she gives Show you a me. better weapon than he does, but we're never really going to be able to use it as we're going for a mage. Um, this is worth 105, 65, and 60. I think uh, she... I think Canthar gives you a similar weapon, but I don't think it's quite as good. Show me. So the good thing is now we have the money to buy the two scrolls I wanted, and I can show you exactly what I intend. So, there's an interesting thing that goes on in the barracks. For some reason, if you start a fight with the prisoners, the guards come and help you by going and attacking the prisoner. But if you try to loot the prisoner after they've been knocked down, the guards accuse you of stealing. So it gets very annoying. I actually need hey. Bolt, Bolt in the face this way to make sure that we're good to go here. So, after numerous tricks, what I used to do was basically pick a fight with Canthar and try and run out of here before he beat the shit out of me. And then try and kill him somewhere outside. But I found a quicker and easier way. It does cost a 200 gold for the two spells, but you'll see why they're both necessary. The important thing is to make sure that uh, Lord Andre is by his lectern there. Otherwise, he likes to get involved too, and that makes things a bit trickier. So, with Bolton looking at you... Just stay away from me with that magic of yours. He gets pissed if you lose a spell, but... You Will kick you Canthar, stop it now? he goes and beats him up. Ah. Ah. No fighting here, do you understand? Now we need Bolton to go to sleep. Because like I said, he'll attack us if we try and loot Canthar. But if he's asleep, he won't see it, and he also won't see this. Now the reason you gotta loot Canthar before you kill him is for some reason his entire inventory disappears after he gets stabbed. I have no idea why it happens. It might only happen when he's ice blocked. But that's how you get around that. And somehow no one ever suspects when they find Bolton sleeping next to a corpse in the, uh, in the jail there. Alright, let's speak of this fool here. He looks tough and grizzled. How's your duty? Oh, these boys swing their swords like farmers. But when I'm done with them, every single one of them will be a tough, hard bastard. 
I want to join the militia. So? Are you a citizen of the town? Yes. Then talk to Lord Andre. He decides who gets accepted here. What's it like with the militia? Lord Andre is our commander now. The militia used to report to the governor. <laughs> he had no idea what we do here. But That's Lord hilarious. Andre knows what he's doing. He takes good care of the men. Everyone who starts here gets some decent armor and a good weapon. And there are bonuses if you've done a good job. He pays a bounty for every criminal captured. Can you also train me in sword fighting? Lord Andre has ordered that we train everyone who is in a position to defend the city. But that's only true for combat training. All other kinds of training are reserved for the militia. Can you at least halfway handle a weapon? I think so. I can certainly pick it up. All right. You can start when you're ready. Don't sound too enthusiastic. What are the advantages of one or two-handed weapons? Quite simple. With a one-handed weapon, you're faster. That can be a considerable advantage in battle. Two-handed weapons are more ponderous. You have to fight with foresight, but you can do a lot more damage when you're hit. That's not exactly true. I'm not sure why they say that. Um, as far as I know, two-handed weapons are no different in their damage calculation. I've never seen anything to indicate that they were. The only difference is that two-handed weapons just can do more damage by the end of it, but you can find a one-handed weapon that does an equivalent amount of damage to a two-handed weapon, and their stat versus damage requirements are usually the same. So, personally, I don't find any real advantage to two-handed weapons until the later chapters when you can finally equip the best weapons. Where should I start, with one-handed or two-handed weapons? That's entirely up to you. If you specialize in only one type of weapon, you automatically learn the other at the same time. If, for instance, you're good at fighting with one-handed swords, but still a beginner with two-handed weapons, your two-handed skills will go up as well whenever you train with a one-hander. In that case, the training is more exhausting than if you train with both types of weapons. Just start and you'll soon see what I'm talking about. So to summarize what he says there, because it can be a little bit confusing, you basically do not want to split your learning points between one and two-handed weapons, or between bow and crossbow for that matter, which he doesn't explain. Um, when there is a difference of 25% skill between uh, one weapon skill and the opposite weapon skill, they will start increasing in tandem every time you level up the higher one. But only when there's 25 uh, pr points of separation between them. So, for example, when you get to 35 skill in one-handed weapons, but still only have 10 in two-handed, every time, every point you spend on one-handed will also raise you two-handed. But if you raise them both equally, you're going to spend more learning points in the end. So there's no reason to do that. But it does mean by the time you become a master in one-handed weapons, you will basically be a master in two-handed weapons. So if you do find yourself wanting to switch by the end... It's still going to cost more to finish off uh, the other one, but they will at least increase together uh, at some point. We are going to be a mage, though, which means none of that matters to us. Now, there is a neat thing with Wolfgar, something I didn't know for the longest time, and I only learned because I believe Val informed me to go watch uh, another friend of mine, Koshmar's stream. Uh, not stream. Yeah, his stream. When he was doing the Lehiver mod. Uh, there is a secret kind of event that happens when you encounter Wolfgar at a very specific time of day. I believe it's between 6 and 7 o'clock in the morning. One thing I didn't know is that when you sleep in a bed and say rest until the next morning, it rests until 8 o'clock, not until 6 o'clock like I thought it did. But... If you, the only normal way to get Wolfgar at that time of day is to rest until midnight and just wait until he comes back out here. But we can cheat a little bit using Marvin mode and set time to 6 o'clock. You'll see he's out here training by himself at this hour. I've already saved, so we'll just reload that one. And if you talk to him when he's here by himself... Out and about so early? I'm usually alone at this time of day. But since you're already here, you might as well learn something. So pay attention. You can deceive some opponents if you dodge their blows and attack at the right moment. 
Remember that in your next fight. A very uh, straightforward um, tip there, but it is actually one that I use. But what it doesn't tell you, because there's no pop-up, is you get two points in one-handed skill from that. Which is a neat little touch. Very hard to find that. Two points doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. And I don't recommend going for free uh, skill points at this point in the game because we're at the threshold where skills cost their lowest amount of learning points. Essentially, every skill in stat, once you hit 30, doubles their cost in learning points. So, you know, it's one point for one skill. Once you hit 30, it becomes two points for one skill. The same cap happens at 60, where it becomes three points for one skill. And again at 90, where it becomes four points. So only when you get to 90 do you really want to start going for the freebies like that. That's true if you drink potions, or when we can finally learn to read these. Um, if you are going to learn archery, I recommend waiting until you have... It's tough to say. I would say around 90, because I think you can find a total of tw 10 or 12 points of free archery skill in those tablets. I don't really remember, but it is what it is. All right, so this actually took me quite a bit longer than I thought. I've been trying to keep these episodes under an hour. We might be able to just squeeze it in. But last thing I want to do today is talk to this gentleman here with his nice uh, rugs here and his free um, apparatuses. And unfortunately, it's not as exciting as it looks. It's just tobacco. But let's have a word with him and why he's giving out free, uh, free hits here. How strange. It seems to me that I have met you before, Traveler. Well, great are the mysteries of time and space. Oh, please forgive my rudeness, son of patience. I have not even greeted you yet. Welcome, friend. Take a seat on my humble rugs and enjoy a pipe in peace. Oh, what a friendly foreign fellow. So, again, he's a strange fellow because uh, he seems to give... A, he seems to let people smoke for free here. Which, uh, is... I wonder how he makes a business exactly. Who are you? My name is Abu Jin ibn Jadir ibn Omar Khalid bin Haji al-Sharidi. I am a seer That's a lot and a of name. prophet, an astrologer, and a purveyor of tobacco. What kind of tobacco do you offer? My pipes are filled with spicy, refreshing apple tobacco. Mm, Help spicy. yourself whenever you want, son of adventure. Do you have other tobacco as well? I offer only the very best tobacco. This apple plant is a symphony from my homeland, the Southern Isles. But, of course... I'm always open to trying a different sort of tobacco. If somebody should succeed in producing a really good tobacco... How's that done? Start with my apple tobacco as a basis, and then try combining it with another ingredient. This is done at an alchemist's bench, provided you know the essentials of alchemy. Where can I get apple tobacco? I shall give you two portions. It is up to you, in your wisdom, to do with them whatever you want. If you crave more, then direct your steps toward Zuris, the master of potions. He produces this tobacco, and he sells it too. Interesting. I wonder why you don't sell your own damn tobacco. Ye, inhabitants of so these are the massive portions of, of tobacco, I must say. Pagan, that is not is one evening smoke. Enacted. And we get two of them for free. But this isn't all he offers realm. here. He, uh, his real... He only moon, moonlights as a uh, tobacco distributor. Can you make me a prophecy? My services are yours for a modest fee. Oh, father of generosity. How much do you want? For a poultry, 25 coins. I shall risk a glance through time for you. But remember... Poultry, indeed. The future is always uncertain. All I can do is glimpse some fragments of time. Tell me about the future. All right, seeker of knowledge. I shall now enter a state of trance. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Damn. Orcs. They are guarding an entry. 
an old tunnel, a valley of mines, men in shining armor, a magician. Your friend is with them. He is waiting for you. Fire! An attack! A mighty creature. The flames, many shall die. What is that? A city. Ruins. Quarhodron in Jakandar. He is summoned. Quarhodron in Jakandar. Wow. I'm sorry. The vision is over. There's nothing more I can see. Fascinating. Can you make me another prophecy? Oh, son of the mysterious future. It is not within my power to live the veil of time. Only when time sends me another omen shall I be able to see for you again. When will that be? When the future has become present and you have continued your journey. So basically, each of his prophecies uh, are a foreshadowing of what you're going to do in the next chapter. So once you reach chapter two, he'll be able to give you another prophecy. And make sure you go see him because uh, chapter two uh, sends you to another location and you might forget to even speak to him then. And chapter three begins as soon as you return from there. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's enough for today. Um, we got a fair bit done. We're unfortunately a li bit light on cash, but we actually got a sword we can sell now. Uh, Canthar's longsword here fetches a pretty penny. Compensates somewhat for uh, the cost uh. it took to dispatch him. Show me but it's worth it just to make sure he never bugs us again. So, next episode, I'll have to figure out what we're going to do. It might be time to actually uh, branch out beyond the walls of the city a little bit, but I actually think we're going to head to the harbor and uh, snoop around down there and see what's going on. So we kind of we made ourselves scarce from there pretty quickly. So, until next time... Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all very kindly for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch if you want to see live stream shenanigans. Uh, subscribe to my stream archive channel if you missed them and want to see the uh, re-uploads. Follow me on Twitter if you give a shit. Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful night.